So hello friend this is Rupesh and you are watching CVP Nets video series on lead code concurrency videos and this is going to be the second video of this whole playlist. So and I hope you have already watched the first video. So this second video is suppose you are given uh, these two snippet. So these two are functions foo and bar. This is a class inside foo you will print foo for n number of times and similarly inside bar also you will print bar for n number of times. So these two are functions and what they are telling is the same instance of foo bar will be passed to two different threads meaning this n will be common for both. So they will be called on the same object so they will share this n meaning it is same for both and they are telling thread a will call foo while thread b will call bar and they are asking us to modify the program output into foo bar n times. So it's like if they have given one time like if n is one then it should print foo bar only one time and if it is like this should be the output if they have given n is equal to two then it should be like foo bar foo bar meaning it should be two time but the catch is always foo will come first and then bar will come and then it has to be foo again okay and as this is multi-threading you will just call them and give this n and you will try to print now you have to give the control over printing so that it is always in synchronization so like one function will print foo and it always has to be the foo function which is going first and then foo function will tell to the bar function now I am done you go ahead and once bar is done bar will tell to foo that okay I am done now you go ahead so it's like you will set up a synchronization between two functions two threads so that's the job and if you are still confused uh, let me just draw it for you so t1 thread will call foo function okay and t2 will call bar function but they both function will be having one common object let's say foo bar is a class and this obj is the object this object is common in foo and bar function that's why that n you remember is common for both and if you see this print foo will actually print foo and this print bar will print bar so now let's start the synchronization if you have watched my previous video that would have already clicked and you must be shouting from your end maybe but yeah let me just do that std condition variable cv and we need std mutex m and now you have to tell that okay this thread will wait for the signal and that thread will wait for the signal so let's uh, implement that mechanism so std unique lock lk and we will use this common mutex for both and we'll use condition variable and we'll say wait and we'll give lock and we'll have to give lambda and this because we want one common variable inside this function so if you don't know what this wait does it's like I will wait for this or on this lock with this given mutex and if I will get any notification for this condition variable I will wake up and check one condition that's why it is called condition variable I'll check this condition if this condition is true for me whatever the condition is if that is true then I will go ahead if it is not I'll go and sleep again so that's the job of the condition variable here so now we will use my turn is equal to equal to one if that's the case yeah and we need one turn variable as well turn is equal to one so first and after writing turn and telling the value for that would be one and now here we need now we'll say turn is two and we'll notify all so the similar code will go for bar also and this time we'll give this lock and this is required I mean you are giving the scope to this lambda function and telling that the entire object is accessible here and then you are checking if turn is equal to equal to 2 this time then only oh yeah I just forgot to return this true and true here okay now turn is 1 and cv.notify 
all. So let me just cross verify. Is there any issue here? Done and wait foo to notify all. Let me just run this. Okay, so there is no issue. The test case is passing. Let me submit this. Okay, 63%. So you understood what happened, right? No matter what happens, in what order these functions are called, that is not a problem because the default value of turn in the beginning is one. And once you start both the threads, you come here, they both will encounter this. And obviously this is going to return true. And then this will only happen first. So in that case, once it is printing foo, then only we are telling now it's your turn, meaning whoever is waiting for this particular thing to get two. Now we have initialized two, we'll tell, okay, whoever is waiting now just wake up. I mean, whoever is waiting on this particular condition variable, wake up and check if your condition is true now. Now, as there is only one thread waiting, it will wake up and check this condition. And if it is true, then it will do its job. And then now it is telling, okay, I will initialize it to one. And obviously this for loop would have ended after this and it would have gone back and it will try to take the mutex and wait because turn is equal to equal to two till here it will wait. And now this notify will wake this thread and it will print foo and tell turn is two. So now you can see, right? One thread is doing its job and notifying to other that, okay, now you go ahead, I'm done. So there are many ways you can achieve this functionality. I find this way more intuitive because you have little flexibility in your hand. And as we saw a previous video that if you go by this method, you can synchronize n number of threads by using just single turn variable. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye. Take care. And yeah, as always keep learning.